from the Lakeside Newsroom of the Henrico Citizen, your hometown news source since 2001. This is the Henrico News Minute with publisher Tom Lapis. A public apology from the Henrico School Board Chair. 247 people are in quarantine because of positive COVID cases in the school system and a driver charged in connection with a fatal July traffic accident. We'll have details about those stories and others in today's Henrico News Minute for Thursday, March 11, 2021. It's brought to you today by Henrico County. And now for the news. The Henrico School Board met for about three hours in closed session yesterday at a special meeting that was called to discuss a Facebook post that Chair Mickey Ogburn shared on her personal page on Friday night. The offensive post took issue with the decision of Dr. Seuss Enterprises to stop publication of six Dr. Seuss books that it deemed partially racist. The post included an image of the Grinch extending his middle finger and also an offensive poem. Ogburn yesterday apologized publicly for the first time. She spoke with us on Monday to apologize. She also posted an apology on her personal page Friday night after deleting the original post. Yesterday, she said, quote, if I had read the offensive poem in its entirety, I would have never reposted because this does not represent what I believe in. I cannot begin to describe the depth of my regret for that pain and the pain I have caused others, end quote. A petition created late Tuesday night has more than 200 signatures. It asked that Ogburn resign as chair of the board and be offered anti-racism and social media training as well as that she acknowledged the harm caused by her actions. She did that yesterday but said she will not resign as chair or from the board entirely. Board Vice Chair Marcy Shea indicated yesterday that the board had voted unanimously to undergo required cultural sensitivity and implicit bias training to, quote, heal, educate, and work towards overcoming the damaging effects of this incident, end quote. The board also intends to hold a town hall meeting in the future about equity and diversity that's likely to happen prior to spring break, according to school system spokesman Andy Jenks. There have been 21 cases of COVID-19 reported in Henrico County Public Schools since in-person learning began again on February 22nd, 11 at the elementary school level and 10 at the high school level. That's according to school system data. The cases have not resulted in any outbreaks between students and staff members, but have required 247 people to quarantine because of close contact with those who tested positive. The majority of those who are quarantining, 153, had close contact during athletics or extracurricular activities at the high school level with someone who tested positive. Those cases included 68 people at Highland Springs High School quarantining from contact with two who tested positive and 42 at Godwin who came in contact with one of three people who tested positive there. There were also 21 quarantining at Henrico High School and 19 at Tucker. It's unknown how many of those cases are associated with sports teams and whether any teams will have to postpone or cancel games as a result. At the elementary school level, the cases have most significantly impacted Harvey Elementary, where four positives required 59 people to enter quarantine. At Springfield Park, one positive case led to the quarantining of 27 people. Well, more good news on the COVID-19 front in the county. Only 31 new cases were reported yesterday, according to the Virginia Department of Health. The county's seven-day moving average number of new daily cases dropped to just 43. There were three new hospitalizations and three new deaths related to the virus in the county reported as well. Henrico's positivity percentage during the seven-day period ending March 6th fell to 5.5% among PCR tests and 6.1% among rapid tests. The county is now fourth in total COVID vaccines administered, trailing only Fairfax, Loudoun, and Virginia Beach. Just about 18% of Virginia's overall population now has received at least one dose of vaccine. Another free COVID-19 testing event will take place a week from today on Thursday, March 18th from 1 to 3 p.m. at the Eastern Henrico Health Department at 1400 North Laburnum Avenue. 
The event will be a drive through testing opportunity. To register, you can visit bit.ly backslash rhhd covid or call 205-3501 between 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. Monday through Friday. Henrico police have charged a driver in connection with a July crash that killed a 76-year-old Henrico woman. 53-year-old Jodel Alvis faces indictment on a charge of reckless driving in relation to that incident. It killed Lucy Lee in the 500 block of Wellwyn Road. Happened at about 8.40 in the morning that day, July 27th. Lee was struck by a 2012 Jeep Cherokee allegedly driven by Alvis who was backing out of a driveway. Here's a traffic alert for you next week. Beginning on Tuesday, VDOT will conduct a series of traffic switches on I-64 over Airport Drive as part of the ongoing project at that interchange. On Tuesday night, eastbound I-64 traffic will switch onto a newly constructed eastbound bridge. And then the following night, traffic in both directions will be normal while crews work on the median bridge, while Thursday night, westbound I-64 traffic will switch onto the median bridge while crews begin working to demolish the existing westbound bridge. A few homes in Henrico County sold for more than $760,000 recently. Find out where they were and look at other properties that have changed hands in the county recently by checking out this week's property transactions report. You can find it on HenricoCitizen.com by clicking on News and then Property Transactions. Today's Henrico News Minute has been brought to you by Henrico County's COVID-19 Emergency Rental Assistance, providing assistance for those who have experienced economic impact related to the virus, such as job loss or furlough. Applications are available at henrico.us backslash DSS or by calling 501-5294.